if you drive south out of liberal Kansas today, just across the border into Oklahoma, it's hard to imagine what life was like in 1888 in the same place. But let me tell you about a time that was absolutely scandalous. Beer City has risen from the dust. A group of actresses regales their audience with stories of the Wild West and a strip of land known as No Man's Land. During the 1880s, the Oklahoma Panhandle was not governed or owned by any specific state or nation. And in 1887, a group of opportunistic men and women saw it as the perfect place to provide drink and entertainment for locals. They set up a makeshift town with tents and two saloons not far from liberal Kansas. It was known as Beer City. It was quite convenient because that way uh, liquor was illegal in Kansas anyway and it would have had to have been bought from bootleggers, so this just made it quite convenient. Pauline Hodges is a local historian who has written several books on the region, as well as a play called The Beer City Gals. The trains traveling through Liberal provided a stream of illegal beer and liquor for the city just across the state line. Enterprising business people would come into Liberal, uh, buy beer as it came in on the train, as well as hard liquor, haul it out to Beer City where they served it and had a growing enterprise. Trains also brought cowboys and cattle herders looking for ladies and libation. The men found exactly what they wanted at the Yellow Snake Saloon, a bar and brothel run by Nell Jones, better known as Pussycat Nell. The raucous city continued to operate uninterrupted until an outsider tried to bring the law out of town. Amos Bush came down from Kansas and proclaimed himself the sheriff. He probably would have gotten by with that if he'd have simply taken care of behavior but he decided that he would levy a tax on each of the business establishments, and therefore he would make some money for himself. Well, he tried to tax Pussycat Nell at the Yellow Snake Saloon, and she didn't shoot him immediately, but eventually she saw him outside her window and she shot him. It's a tale reenacted by Hodges and her fellow actresses. I grabbed my double-barrel shotgun and let him have it right in the back of the neck. Fourteen other merchants also joined the gun battle, and Sheriff Amos Bush was riddled with 74 bullet holes when the smoke had cleared. Two men were eventually taken to Paris, Texas for a trial, but one man escaped and the other was exonerated. Once the panhandle was added to the Oklahoma Territory in 1890, Beer City disbanded. They shut it down because then the sheriff of the new Oklahoma Territory in Beaver could have come up, come out and shut them down. I don't think he did. I can't find any records that he did, but they knew he would. It was just a matter of time. Today, an unincorporated community lives on the land where Beer City stood. While the tents and the saloons have vanished, the ghost town's history still haunts the region. We don't call it Beer City anymore, but it certainly would be a fitting name for it because I suspect more beers sold here than in most places in Liberal. If you want to talk about this place being somewhat like the original, of course it's not nearly as illegal or sinful, but I think it's ironic that we have a bingo parlor, which is gambling in a sense of the word. We have a dance hall that was busted for drugs, which fits right into the decor. We have places that sell beer, we have places that sell cigarettes. So, the ghost of the past has arisen. The ghosts of the past also live on in the performance of the Beer City Gals, which has been touring the region for the past eight years. The acting troupe has performed the play more than 20 times and will continue their tour as long as there is an audience. I just think that everyone needs to know the history of where they live.